Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to talk about angina pectoris. Angina pectoris literally means pain in the chest and this pretty much explains what it is. It is by definition the suddenly occurring pain in the chest or a retrosternal area which is caused by ischemia of the heart. Angina pectoris is the primary complaint of patients with coronary heart disease. Angina is in clinical practice usually divided into five stages. The staging I will present you is made by the Canadian Cardiovascular Society and is the European standard. Stage zero describes the mildest form of angina in which the patient does not experience symptoms. Here we speak of a silent ischemia as the heart muscle is still underperfused even though the patient does not feel that. In stage one, the patient has pain in strenuous exercise but can follow his normal everyday life. Stage two presents with symptoms during normal physical activities which the patient will progressively avoid to not experience the discomfort associated with angina. Stage 3 is defined as chest pain in daily activities with increased avoidance of such. In stage 4, the most severe case, patients will experience symptoms even at rest. We speak of unstable angina. What unstable angina is? And how it differs of stable angina, we will talk about more later. First, I want to discuss the etiology and different types of the disorder. As said before, angina pectoris occurs when the heart does not receive enough blood supplied by the coronary arteries. This is most often due to an occlusion of those coronary arteries, which is mostly caused by arteriosclerosis. The blood flow through the arteries can also be reduced when the vessel lumen is reduced due to vasospasm. This is the cause of a specific type of angina called Prince metal angina. Other types of angina pectoris are differentiated by their occurrence. It can be de novo, so arising spontaneously and without prior notice. It can also be exercise-induced, where only heavy physical workload leads to underperfusion of the heart as the demand for blood is increased. Another type is when chest pain occurs at rest. This is called unstable angina, where a ruptured blood plaque and vasoconstriction lead to temporary occlusion of the coronary arteries. Another type we differentiate is when angina pectoris only occurs at night, when the patient is sleeping and the heart is able to relax. This is similar to decubital angina, which only occurs when the patient is lying. But here we do not differentiate whether the patient is lying but being awake or being asleep. Another interesting type of angina pectoris is called walking through angina, where pain in the retrosternal area occurs only in the beginning of strenuous exercise, but as the patient continues, the symptoms improve. An extensive anamnesis and conversation with the patient will help you to clearly demarcate which type of angina the patient experiences. Also examinations as ECG or stress tests are useful to determine the degree and severity of the patient's complaints. At last, I want to discuss the difference between stable and unstable angina, as this is often subject of oral exams. Stable angina appears in exercise or stress, also emotional stress, when the heart is required to work harder and the blood pressure increases. It usually has a sudden onset and lasts for two to five minutes. Stable angina is due to a fixed occlusion of the artery 
and so will reoccur when the same workload is put upon the heart. This makes the anginal attack predictable both for the doctor and the patient. It usually passes by itself as the trigger, no matter if it is exercise or emotional stress, resolves. Stable angina is diagnosed by the use of an electrocardiograph and it is seen more frequently in doctor's offices than unstable angina. Unstable angina appears suddenly and while the patient is at rest or following normal daily activities. It lasts longer than the episode in stable angina with a duration of approximately 10 to 15 minutes. Unstable angina is due to a ruptured plaque combined with vasospasm which decreases the blood flow of the coronary arteries. The attack is unpredictable and spontaneous. Unstable angina severely increases the risk for myocardial infarction and sudden cardiac death as suddenly the blood supply to the cardiac muscle tissue is decreased and the heart has no chance of developing compensatory mechanisms. The diagnosis is usually not done by ECG, but rather by coronary angiography. Unstable angina is a medical emergency and requires immediate treatment, which usually consists of heparin and nitroglycerin to dissolve the clot and dilate the affected vessels. That's it for now. I hope this short overview was helpful and if you like our videos, we would be very grateful if you could subscribe. Thank you very much.